A very good afternoon and welcome to the Sukhumvirasa Stadium indoor pool as we bring you live coverage on www.thepapare.com of this 24th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter between Royal and St. Thomas's for this trophy that has grown from uh, a humble beginnings into an absolutely massive event between the two schools. It's going to be the under-19 game for the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy in just a few minutes' time here at Sikhadadasa. As the sun beats down, Pamokya Marabe joins me here in uh, our open-air commentary box. Uh, Pamokya, it's uh, good, uh, good news for St. Thomas's that they haven't lost anyone from last year's Heyman winning team, but Royal, with their backs to the wall, will come out firing today. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, and good afternoon to all our viewers listening wherever you may be. Yes, definitely. St. Thomas's College, of course, uh, has been holding on to the trophy for two years consecutively now. And like you mentioned, they have not lost a single player from the team that brought them victory last year. So definitely the advantage will be with the Thomians. But Royal College, as we all know, are up for a fight. They, are, they look determined to bring the trophy back. They have strong support here today at the Sukhuda Stadium. And I think we are in for a cracker of a match. We are indeed. And uh, when you look at both teams, there are 18 colorsmen on both teams. And uh, that's probably unprecedented. I don't know whether we've had uh, as many colorsmen staying over from uh, the last year as we have this year. Eight colorsmen for Royal, ten colorsmen for St. Thomas's. And uh, the coaches, also very experienced coaches, the head coach for St. Thomas's, Zafar Zainuddin and his counterpart, Arlo Caprelis, both very experienced uh, coaches, experienced players as well. And this one should, should be a battle of chess as much as it is a physical endurance battle. We've uh, got a few pre-match rituals to have gone through. Usually two independent or foreign referees are brought down for this uh, controversial, usually controversial Heyman encounter. But this time it's only one. Silva has been given the task of being the local uh, referee in charge today. And if the first game was anything to go by, this one is going to be an absolute Nail biter because uh, St. Thomas has won the first leg of the Mahind the Leonage Trophy game just a few minutes earlier by 10 goals to 8. Nice open game of water polo, some good shooting from outside as well. And we would be expecting that from uh, this team as well. Dilaka Viraratna, last year's captain, scored four goals in this encounter. Will be expected to uh, lead from the front once again, although he has uh, relinquished his captaincy duties to Dilaka Viraratna. And another very fast swimmer from uh, Royal College, Tandula Fernando, will be leading his team. And he has some experience in his ranks as well with uh, Yaya Jaffa, Kisal Asala Rachi, the big prop. And uh, Rifa Tuez, among the men who will be uh, counted upon in this leg. Alo Caprelis together with uh, Sean Lakshita. And the rest of the coaching team will be hoping to bring this one back. Several banners around Harun. In, uh, at, on the Royal side of the Sukhadadasa Stadium and they will be expecting the trophy to come back to Royal in a week's time. Yes indeed and uh, Looks like uh, St. Thomas's have won the toss, which means that they will be uh, going left to right on your screens, which means that the sun is coming in from behind the St. Thomas's team, which means it will be right in the eyes of uh, the Royal goalkeeper, Kalindu. And uh, that is going to be something that he has to deal with. So St. Thomas's will be well advised to take uh, some long shots uh, early on in the piece if they can manage it. 24th encounter between these two teams. It has grown from a home and away encounter into something that cannot accommodate the capacity crowds in their own schools. So it has moved to two legs at neutral venues here at the Sukhadasa Stadium. And uh, there's a hush that comes over the crowd as we await the, fi the uh, initial whistle. Harun, which way do you think is going to go today? Going for the swim ball, Yahya Jaffa. 
and he's easily one of the fastest uh, players in the pool doing well there to uh, win the ball from Isuru Kahandavela the speedster for St. Thomas's Rifa Thuwes brings it up and uh, sends it out to the wing first up here's uh, Daishika Dias puts it into the uh, prop Jaffa goes in at prop, but uh, there's no foul there. Good defense from uh, St. Thomas's. That was the captain, Akil Sauja, and uh, he will be called upon because Jaffa is an experienced player, as is Asala Rachi, who will play in that center forward position. Winning the foul uh, was Ashen Francis with the shot. Alindu Hettiarachi with his first touch, that will give him some confidence and the corner ball to be taken by Isuru Kahadavala, sends it long to his uh, last year's captain Dereka Viraratna and uh, well stolen there by, uh, uh, by uh, Rifat Uwes of Sachita Jayatilaka who struggles to keep up with his man. Really poor pass. I thought uh, Riffa did really well to get away from his man. And unfortunately, Royal were caught napping there. She should have attacked the goal, filled the lanes. Kosa Luvita would have been under pressure. Oh, that's first one for St. Thomas's. Keshan Mudasinger with a little fist pump. Lovely vision to spot him there from uh, Isuru Kadawala and really terrible defense there from Royal allowing uh, the player in behind them and well spotted the goalkeeper perhaps should have come for that but he was caught in two minds with Kadawala having an open goal at his mercy as well but uh, first blood for two St. Thomas's. Royal taking it uh, through Jaffa into the two-meter area. Not a good pass, but uh, Uwes will uh, try to control this from the center position. Gives it into Chandula Fernando, his captain. <laughs> Sauja will be the key man for them uh, today, Arun. He has been a rock in defense for St. Thomas's. But one issue that I'm having for both these teams is uh, the Heyman is usually the last match of the season. Instead, this time it's the first one. And there uh, might be a few first match blues. Asha and Francis under pressure. And that's a good swim in from Dilaka Viraratna once again. Viraratna looking to turn and shoot. Bangs it in with. Uh, oh, and it's a goal! Viraratna takes the rebound. He's the first to react. And Harun 2 0 up. Royal look a little bit shell shocked. <laughs> Early substitution made by uh, Coach Prelis. Yeah, it has been uh, a good start by uh, St. Thomas's and it's very important to get these early blows in, especially because the teams don't know each other's styles from this uh, season. Uh, Harun 2014, I'm sure they would have known each other well, but uh, 2015, it's always a little bit difficult when you have to size each other up. Yeah, as I was talking before, I thought uh, it's interesting to see how Jayatilika actually makes himself uh, fit into the pool. I don't know he, the, he's been selected to represent Sri Lanka in the upcoming Under-19 tournament when Pakistan uh, comes to the island. Well, we see play resuming. It's an absolute dilemma for him, of course, whether he uh, school before country or country before school. Apologies to our viewers there. We had a few technical difficulties with Harun's mic. 
and uh, he will be loud and clear from uh, now on. Uh, shot taken there by uh, Yahya Jaffa. And although it deflects off the uh, Tomian defender, the new rule means that it's not a corner ball anymore. Has to go off the goalie's hands for it to be a corner. And Keshan Munasinghe, the goal scorer, opened the account for St. Thomas's. Yeah, good defense. Very well stolen by the Royal Winger. Basit Yakub there with a yeah. uh, good defense on Munasinghe. And a good ball. Good opportunity for Royal to score. Jaffa needs to take the shot early but gives it instead to uh, the number six coming in without any oh. real purpose. Exceptional defending by defense by St. Thomas's. Kisa Lasalar actually really not attacking that ball. And Kosala Vijayawadhan having a pretty easy time in uh, resting it from his grasp. They had the fast break on there through Jaffa. And that's oh, a that's lovely so pass. Munasinghe uh, caught in two minds as to whether to shoot or pass to Jayatilaka. And in the end, uh, Kalindu Hetiar actually comes away with it. But a superb pirouette right, there for open so ball for all. This should be an easy one for all. They should score and they all get their first blood. Senit Samaranayaka with the first goal for Royal College. And St. Thomas is taking it a little bit easy on defence there. You can already, already see them puffing and blowing. Dilaka Viraratna needed to stick with his man there. But 2-1 now and that will calm the Royal nerves down a little bit. 2-1 reads much better than 3-0. Definitely Shanak, I thought a good counter punch by the Royalist. The winger took the ball well and landed over the prop for him to score it easily. So Senit Samaranayaka puts uh, Royal on the boards again. Good play on the left wing from uh, Yahya Jaffa, the experienced man. The speedster. Timeout called by uh, Zafar Zenudin for St. Thomas's. So that uh, will be their timeout for this quarter. Thomians definitely the most experienced out of the two teams. Uh, Shanaka, what do you think their strategies are? Do you think they'll go with the same ploy that they did with uh, last year or you think they'll try something different? Uh, well, if something's worked, Harun, I think you should stick with it. There's no need to fix something if it isn't broken. And uh, St. Thomas's will probably stick with what they were able to do, but they, they need to make sure that that early lead that they had doesn't make them a little complacent. There was a little bit of laziness on defence to let Royal in uh, for that goal, so they need to make sure they keep attacking. Exactly. It's going to be interesting to see what was said and how it's going to be ex executed. I'm not a big fan of these uh, timeouts. It's uh, designed to give the opposition a chance to swim the ball up without losing too much time. But uh, these set plays rarely work, Harun. Game resuming once again. Dilaka Yuraratna needs to shoot here. Then he does. <laughs> He's deadly from that center position. And Royal cannot afford to stay off him. Dila Gavira definitely the man to watch. He's playing an exceptional game here. He's been on the attack. And whenever he's got the ball, he's been able to score. And uh, really important that Royal pressured the ball there. Because it was pretty telegraphed what they were going to do. Kosa Levijewadana going up, creating the extra man there. And uh, Viraratna doing well. And now Rifa Tuwes takes a shot and the long shot early on can see Royal uh, may be slightly panicking here but they need to calm down and remember there are three more quarters and a bit left Vijay Vodhana gives it to uh, Akhil Sauja the captain spins it to the wing so St. Thomas is clearly trying to get some space for Sachita Jayatilaka to work in and it's the first exclusion of the game Rifa Duez is the man who uh, in fact, it's not an exclusion, it's just, uh, just a, a foul. foul. Veera Ratna will take a shot. Oh! And Once again, that's unfortunate. Really unfortunate for the Royal goalkeeper, Khalidu Hetiarachi. The shot was blocked by uh, Dilakar's marker, but rebounds into the goal and uh, it's always really cruel when that happens, Harun. I, I just hope uh, that Royal does not panic from here onwards. I'm sure they have practiced various strategies on how to counter the Tomian defense. Uh, I hope they don't take the aimless shots uh, 
from the far, far side. So it's going to be interesting to see how they progress from here onwards. What I do notice uh, in the, is a difference between the two teams' strategies, Harun, is the fact that St. Thomas's give their game a lot more width and uh, the wingers are not stretching out to the sideline, which uh, the Thomian winger is doing. That's where they've got to start from. Jaffa goes towards the sideline and now we've got some space. That's an uh, aimless ball, but once again, doing well to uh, defend it. Asala Rachi in the middle there. The, uh, that's the end of the counter. Isuru Kadavala bearing down on goal, but it's to no avail as the referees blow the first quarter time up. And it has been an entertaining quarter, that's for sure, but uh, mostly for the Thomian fans here on the uh, near side of the Sukhumadasa Stadium pool. The noise that we heard prior to the game from uh, the large section of this royal crowd seems to have quieted a bit and i'm sure that that will come back in full force when royal get closer on the boat exactly i'm sure uh, prelis and uh, lakshita will have uh, ideas in mind to uh, uh, to put it into the royal royal, royal heads uh, obviously the ex in, in terms of experience we have st thomas's uh, gaining much more advantage in the first, in first quarter it's going to be interesting to see how royal counter in the second half Second quarter. Yes, I really do think that they need to get that width to their uh, to their prop to play. Kisalara Asalarachi is crowded. He's a strong boy, but he's really very crowded in the middle there. And Kosala uh, Vijayavadana with that long reach finds it very easy just to uh, grab the ball off him because Asalarachi is not getting any space to move. And that is, that's the space that his wingers have to create for him. And uh, that's not happening at the moment, which is what Zafar has done really well. Zafar and Seram, of course, uh, former national captain, with a lot of their experience at international tournaments, will know exactly uh, how to create that space for Satita Jayatilaka. I think uh, Rawl will depend a lot on Fernando Chandulu. Fernando has not yet made his mark uh, in this game. We've seen Jaffa, Yakub playing uh, a very good quarter. Those two are really impressed in that particular quarter. But I think Rawl is will bank on Chandulu Fernando to make a mark on, uh, in the second quarter. I think Royal may have to rely on their swimming speed a little bit uh, later on in this game. Might have to unleash guys like Chandula and uh, Jaffa on the wings. St. Thomas will be wise to that and they'll be happy with this early lead. But Dilaka Viraratna already with two goals. The captain from last year, three goals in fact, three of the four goals scored by him. So a first quarter hat-trick and that's something that Prelis will have to uh, Make sure he counters. Yahan Samarajeev, also part of that coaching staff, another very experienced national player. They're going to have to make sure that they mark uh, Dilaka very close. But he's a good enough player to make sure that that means somebody else is open. Definitely, I think Rawls' concern would be not to overextend the lead that they have currently uh, given. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how they actually defend in this particular quarter, Shanaka. You have to remember that uh, at the end of today's encounter, it will only be half time, so uh, Royal cannot discourage themselves. They've got to realize that conceding that goal is uh, something that they've got to do and think it's only half time when they go back next week. But there's a lot more, 75% of this game left. And uh, the swim ball was called a little bit without St. Thomas's being ready. Silva not uh, being on the ball, so to speak. And refer to ways, we'll hope that they can get the first score of the quarter. Now we see Royal playing with a little bit more with Jaffa. Gives it to Yakub, but it's not a good Royal. pass. Ashen Francis with a good little uh, a lovely swivel over the top. Sachita Jadilaka doing well to draw the defender away. Ashen Francis, beautiful oh, goal. goal. That's an absolutely beautiful punch. A lovely work on defense and Arun, you've got to give it to them. They really have come out firing. That was an exceptional counter play there by, uh, that was, is that Biro Ratna? Asha and Francis. Great, great swim, great approach and a great goal. Much appreciated by the crowd as well. Chanaka. Brilliant how he made space for himself. He managed to swing the ball from his uh, right to his left and then just attacked with that uh, head up swimming speed. And Jayatilaka did really well to draw the defender away. And Uwes now will get past uh, the big uh, Thomian prop. And again, but again very good defense. Well defended. I think Royal probably haven't been playing enough, uh, Harun. It looks like they're a little bit uh, caught off guard. 
Exactly. I think one reason should be must be the lack match exposure, mm -hmm. uh, Shanaka. And we see Rawl countering once again. Three on two here. A few open spaces here. Will Rawl score? That attack is really oh. slow. Really slow. Jaffa, one of the fastest players in the team. And he really should have attacked the goal. Should have gone much faster there and uh, made space for Asal Arachi. Asian Francis, the man who just scored the goal. Can see uh, his uh, number five, Isuru Kahandavala, that's in space. But a push-off has been called by the referee. And it's a turnover. So no exclusions yet, which is surprising. Asal Arachi. Well, haven't set settled down as yet. Uh, why? Well, that's oh, a good, good shot. Ball. Yeah, yeah, Jaffa. Taking advantage of some lax defense from Viraratna. And Kosali Vijay was in a beaten at his near post. He won't be too happy with that. I think at that instance, we saw the Stomian swimmers all over. They, they were not formed uh, in a proper manner to defend uh, the Royal attack. Lost a little bit of uh, concentration there. Viraratna can't afford to let his experienced man have an easy shot on goal like that. Jayatilaka. Manhandled by uh, Rifa Tuez. Munasinghe on the wing. Trying to find a ball that will uh, give one of his shooters an opportunity. It goes long. That's a good ball from really wild pass. Munasinghe, but it looks like it was more dumped than anything else with the uh, shot clock running down. I think Royal taking their time. Waiting for the swimmers to get composed into their positions. And a few open spaces for Royal as they take a shot and oh. goal. Wonderful goal there. I think it's Yakub. Yakub it was. An outstanding bounce into the top corner of the goal. No chance for Vijay Vardhana at all. But St. Thomas is making the same mistake that Royal made in the early part of this game. And hanging off their players. And players are good enough now from 1 through 7. To be able to take those shots from wide out. I think that was much better play by Royal. They were much more composed, Shanaka, more organized. And uh, I think that led to some, some kind of success, I would say. Looks like uh, stern words have been had by the coaching staff in that quarter break. And St. Thomas's need to stop thinking that they've already won the game. Munasinghe looks for the shot. It's blocked. Well blocked. But I think there's an exclusion because uh, there was no one meter space given by the defender and that's a goal in fact it's not a goal the referee one referee calls a two meter infringement and uh, the timeout gets uh, called to uh, Zafar Zainuddin so no goal it stays at 5-3 and uh, just a little bit of confusion once again I think uh, it's a lead that the Royals would, would not be too concerned about if they can maintain this and probably uh, probably counter punch in the third and fourth quarters then they might give the Tomians a good run I guess Shanaka. Yes I think uh, like we said earlier the uh, swimming speed and swimming fitness is going to uh, take its toll but uh, what I do see from Raul is a reluctance to play quickly and I don't know whether that's as a result of uh, overtraining or whether it's uh, as a result of the fact that they're not uh, sharp or game match fit as they say exactly exactly it'll be interesting to see whether they are reserving the energy to boost boost it out probably in the second half so, so there are some very good swimmers uh, in the all contingent Shanaka. indeed here's Veera Ratna it's a oh no goal that was uh, Akil Sauja with the and one first time shot but uh, finds only the bar had only seen himself to blame that was an open goal Viraratna does well, brilliantly well actually. Very well stolen. Now he's got to uh, turn the afterburners on. Viraratna has had uh, several shoulder injuries, so swimming is not going to be his strong shoot. Here's uh, Isuru Kahandavala, got to take the shot. It's a good shot, well saved by uh, Kalindu Hetiarachi. Kahandavala didn't fake the goalie. And, and Yakub. Full of confidence, the left-hander. Open spaces for Royal. Well beaten there is Sajid Ajayatilaka. And now Royal with the chance to score. 
And Yakub now with uh, another opportunity. In fact, it's a penalty. Sajid Jayatilaka giving a penalty away for fouling while the opponent was in the motion of shooting. And Chandula Fernando, the skipper, will take this all important penalty to bring it to 5 uh, 4 if this goes in Harun. So, uh, good counter attack by Royal to get themselves into this position. Huge hush in the stadium as Chandula get prepares himself. And scores! 5 4. St. Thomas is leading at the 24th Royal Tomian Heyman encounter. Good composure and good technique there from Chandula Fernando. Bounced it just in front of uh, Kosala Vijayavadana's outstretched arm. He went the right way but uh, just couldn't control it. And St. Thomas is now finding themselves under a little bit of pressure. Francis comes out to uh, help his captain. Viraratna draws the foul well, looks for the shot, and, and it's good. Goal. <laughs> Easy goal for the Viraratna. And I don't understand why Royal are not covering one side of his body so that he's forced to shoot the other way. Dilak adds his fourth to the goal tally. He's playing exceptional uh, water polo. It's very, very nice to see uh, open uh, and very aggressive uh, playing here, Shahanaka. It's good to see a guy who's not afraid to take a shot. We suffered through a few years of the Heyman uh, Harun where a lot of players were just too afraid to shoot from a distance. But Yakub there showing that he too is not afraid to take a shot. I think Yakub being a left-hander creates uh, much more variety for the Royalists. Indeed. Uh, and another penalty by the sound of things. Yes. No, it was an exclusion for cap number five. And Zayatilaka. Uh, very well saved. An exceptional save there by Hetty Arachi. Really well done. Uh, Satit Jayatilika never really got hold of that one. Should have done better there because it was a really easy shot for him. Fully in space, nobody, no marker on him. Dilaka Viraratna with the block. Sauja. Vijay Vaudana can look to Kahandavala uh, who's found himself in space but it's half time and although it looked like uh, St. Thomas's may run away with it at the end of the first quarter it has now come back to 6-4 at half time and they will just the teams will change sides Arun we've got a thriller of the cards here exactly Shana I think if you take the two quarters it, uh, the first quarter belonged to St. Thomas's and second quarter you have to give it to Royal they played exceptional water polo I thought uh, they were much more composed organized in their play and uh, it was good to see them counter attacking the Thomians Yes, the first quarter finishing 4-1 uh, in favour of St. Thomas's and Royal winning the second one 3-2. So it looks like it's uh, going to be a ding-dong battle for both these teams. Very interesting to see the atmosphere, Shanaka. We have been to a Royal Thomian cricket encounter, yes, a rugby encounter. But you also get the Papara bands playing here at the water polo encounter as well. Yes, it's a, it's a far cry. I was just explaining to uh, Pamukka and Krishan a little while earlier. They were four years old when I played my first Heyman. And uh, that was at the St. Thomas's College pool. And we used to go to the Royal College pool and the crowds were not nearly as big as this. But it's brilliant to see what a occasion, what a Royal Thomian occasion this uh, water polo encounter has become. And I must say the quality of the water polo has consistently improved. And uh, it's great to see these athletes who are now playing such good uh, water polo. It's only a matter of time before this becomes a much bigger sport in the country and we start competing at an Asian level. Exactly, Shanaka. I'm actually proud to say that two of my classmates and very good friends, Bilal Aswan and Aumi Razak, have really uh, strived hard in taking this game to another level. Uh, especially Aumi has uh, really got in, involved uh, with a few sporting bodies trying to bring this sport, take it, take it to a national level. Uh, in fact, uh, he's really put in a hard, put in hard yards. Uh, in bringing water polo to a prominent sport in the country, not only at, at Royal or St. Thomas's. Yes, indeed. I think uh, the Navy water polo team was uh, one uh, place where a lot of these aspiring players could go to and play with 
high quality players. You get a hybrid of Garolis and uh, Thormians as well playing together there. And uh, they had, they actually went to a few international tournaments as well, junior tournaments, and got a lot of experience. And Aoni and uh, Bilal would have been able to see how teams train, how teams play, the strategies used at international stages. We had some uh, amazing Olympic athletes who came down a uh, couple of years ago at, as well and shared their experiences. So it's a stepping stone. It's the first step has been taken. And it's just up to the schools now to make sure that they pump in enough enthusiasm and support to these uh, two teams and take the, take the sport beyond St. Thomas's and Royal and uh, get other teams like Trinity's and uh, St. Joseph's and Peter's Anand and Alanda playing uh, water polo as well. Yes, John, because if you if you take the swimming in, in the swimming circuit, teams like St. Joseph's, Ananda have cracking swimming swimming teams. So ideally they should be able to transform those teams into good water polo teams as well. Looking at uh, given the infrastructure facilities and everything provided, uh, you can see more competitive tournaments uh, coming up in future. I think one issue that needs to be addressed though, Harun, is the fact that uh, swimming coaches are very, very threatened or very wary of water polo. Uh, water polo players, they imagine that it's going to upset their swimming technique, uh, that it's going to slow their times down, that their players are or their swimmers are going to get bulky and they're not being able to maintain those times. So I think we need to uh, make sure that there's a healthy sort of uh, transference of skills between swimming and water polo. Because I remember a lot of the times, uh, good swimmers were not allowed to come for water polo practice uh, by their coaches, and I think that's still prevalent. So I think we need that suspicion of swimming coaches to be taken away and uh, realize that these water polo players can sw swim uh, sub 55, uh, 100 meters if they need to. Exactly, Shanaka. It's all about nurturing talent uh, and identifying talent and making sure that they peak, uh, bring this and mold these guys into uh, very good swimmers plus water polo players, especially Royal and St. Thomas have been playing this sport for 24 long years uh, and have really uh, grown in maturity in terms of playing the sport. So they, they know the game inside out. The culture of the game is such that it has brought in a lot of unity amongst the team. When, if, be it on the, uh, within the pool or outside the pool. They travel together, they get together, they dine together, which is a lovely culture, I think, uh, the Tomis and Royal is there Well, that's good to see because also a few years ago, I thought that had uh, died a, a temporary death for a while and uh, there was a bit of bad blood between the teams. You wouldn't find them shaking hands or hugging each other after the en encounters, which it's good to see that has all changed. And that stems from the coaches as well. I'm sure that um, they have to be given that example and I'm sure the organizing committees have uh, strived hard to make sure that uh, that spirit of camaraderie is around uh, the Heyman encounter. Some of my best friends are guys that I played against. so. Uh, it's uh, it's all good to see. The referee has blown the whistle, wanting the players to come into the pool. The Tommy is already in. Royal in their huddle. A few harsh words will be uh, mentioned within the camp. Alok uh, Prelis has found himself in this situation many times before, so he's uh, he won't let it overwhelm him. Zafar Zainuddin is uh, one that can let the pressure get to him. He can get a little emotional sometimes, but he's got to remain calm as well. And that uh, calmness will transfer to his players. So I think uh, we've done well so far. I haven't seen an exclusion yet, Arun, which is uh, really surprising. Oh, yes, there we did see one, one, yeah. uh, one exclusion. Yeah. That was when uh, Chandula Fernando uh, was sent out, actually. So just a one exclusion for Royal. And uh, I think uh, St. Thomas should look to feed uh, Sati Tajati like a little bit more in this quarter, see if they can wear Royal down. This time around, uh, once again, Royal win the swim ball for the third time. Akil Sauja being beaten to the ball by uh, the number 10, it was Senita Samaranayaka. Lovely ball. Oh. Rashi Dazi finds himself in the pool for the first time. So a substitution made by uh, the Royal Bench. Vijay Vadana. Gives it to Kandavala. No real structure for St. Thomas's. We aren't finding that umbrella formation yet. Dilaka Veeraratna. Double teamed there but uh, takes his time getting to the ball. And Sachita now asks for it. Oh. But uh, the angle was too acute for him uh, with that backhand. Looking at that shot, it reminds me of Bilal Hassan taking a few shots back in 2008, Shanaka. 
I remember watching that game. I think that was an exceptional year for Royal Water Polo. Uh, they went on to win uh, all six titles uh, in the tournaments that they played. Yeah, he was uh, probably one of the best props I've had the misfortune to play against, Harun. <laughs> played against uh, some of the best in the business, guys like Devin Chamugam from back in the day. Uh, Jehan Mubarak himself was a very good prop, but uh, Bilal had everything. He had size, strength, speed and cunning. So I would say that uh, he's probably the best uh, I've had the uh, misfortune of marking. I'm sure most of uh, the Royalists would idolize guys like Bilal and Jahan who have played the game at the highest level, Shanaka. Indeed, I think there's a bit of a gap between the two names you mentioned. To be fair, Arun Bilal was uh, in a class apart. Chaitilaka. Wins the foul and now they look for a swimmer. <laughs> we are at the trying a little cute uh, low bomb. So Daniel Carter doing that yesterday against Georgia. This time it didn't work. The lights come on here and uh, the players will have to adjust to the change in the light a little bit. The goalies especially. Exactly, and the reflection of the water would uh, definitely have an impact on the players. Well, not being able to string uh, those passes together, they can't afford to give the ball away. Vijay Wadhana waits patiently, but Royal are much tighter in defence now. And Royal had enough time to organise in the organize themselves. Veera Ratna will uh, look for the shot. And very well saved by Hetiarachi. Jatilek looked for the rebound, but to no avail as we see a good pass. It's just that he's. Um, okay, Sauja did well to shut off uh, one side of the pool for Senit Samaranayaka, the man who scored the first goal for Royal. And it's a corner ball. Sauja chooses to mark. Uh, Rifatu is from in front and uh, now he's got to move to Senit Samaranayaka. Jaffa. Oh, Good shot, yeah. well saved by Vijay Wagana. Valiant Nicely attempt. positioned by uh, Yahya Jaffa. Didn't go for power, went for placement. And Vijay Wagana read it all the way. The quarter has begun somewhat slowly. Uh, Shanak, that does not seem to be quick swimming across the pool. And I think open spaces for all official Thomases. And an exclusion, the second exclusion for Royal. And Keshan Munasinghe should really have gone for the one two there with such a giant. Open Lekha. spaces for away rather than his goals. And the captain gets his first goal of the game, Akil Sauja. The two are former and current captains high fiving each other in the middle of the pool there, number three and number seven. And Akil will be happy to get his name on uh, the score sheet as uh, St. Thomas has scored the first goal of this third quarter. The lead extends to three goals. St. Thomas is leading by seven to four. From a Thomian point of view, they need to get the ball into uh, Jayatil a bit more often, but he's been substituted. You see a lot of plans. And into the pool comes Shakti Gunatilaka. Give him a rest and unleash him uh, back in the fourth quarter. I would think is uh, Zafar Zainuddin's thinking, and th that's a terrible pass uh, from uh, Rifa who has just tried to be a little too fancy. Royal have to play the way they played, as you said uh, in the second quarter. Harun composed water polo. Try to that be a rookie, and once again, St. Thomas is losing the ball. Uh, you see a, a fast sprint by the prop, and the winger has open play. Easy for all. Should they score? No. The, all, the goalie almost dribbled the ball into the goal, Shanaka. Yes, that was a lucky escape for Kosala uh, Vijay Vaudana, but a timely intervention by uh, Isuru Kahandavala. Just as Asil Arachi was about to score, they've got a man free on the far corner if oh. they can find him. Chalke Gunatilaka just come into the pool. Beautiful pass. Oh. And Asin Francis puts it away easily, but. Brilliantly spotted Chaki Gunatilaka on the far corner. Keshan Munasinghe fed him and Gunatilaka drew the defence, drew the defence and the last moment a beautiful pass into Francis. 
who held it, held it, held it, and uh, then scored an easy goal. So St. Thomas is on the fast break, showing that they've got a few ball movement skills of their own. I think at that instance, the Royal Defence looked all at Sishanaka. They had no idea what was happening, and quite smart work done there by uh, Francis. Basit Yakub goes out. And uh, Rashid Aziz is uh, in the pool. Prelis calls for, an, for the timeout. Royal timeout has been taken. Kisal Arslarach has been kept rather quiet by uh, the Thomian defence. Uh, Harun and Royal will be a dis bit disappointed with that because Arslarach is one of their chief weapons. And uh, he missed that goal a little earlier, probably took it a little too easy. But the sharpness is missing from this Royal attack. We we keep on saying that, but there's nothing they can do now, is there? Exactly, Shanaka. I think the uh, key uh, word would be inconsistency of play, I guess. Uh, you were, we're not seeing the same Royal outfit that which uh, played uh, in the second quarter. They seem to be, uh, I don't know, not, not in place. I, they feel a bit, as I said, not composed. Ideally, they should look in getting organized, playing organized water polo, get, get, get their formation right and look to score. I would put that probably down to squad depth, uh, Harun, because the St. Thomases can uh, play five colorsmen against each other if they want to at practice. Royal don't have that luxury. Asalarache with his, oh, good shot, but well saved. Timeout called by Zafar Zainuddin. Unfortunate timeout. I thought he should have let that go because Shaka Gunatilaka had left his marker and they would have had an extra man if they had just allowed play to go on. Sometimes I think coaches need to be a little bit more mindful instead of uh, going with the script, be able to adapt. But good marking there from uh, St. Thomas's. Exceptional. I must commend the goalies' efforts there at that, uh, at that point. Quite an quite, quite a easy shot for Arsenal Arachi. Uh, to no avail, I think he did an exceptional job uh, marking that ball. It's actually something that uh, not enough defenders do and goalkeepers do form a partnership with each other, Harun. Because all you've got to tell your defender is, you know what, don't let him shoot in one one half of the goal and I'll take care of the other half, which is exactly what Kosala Vijay was and he did. And uh, defenders can't be expected to prevent uh, a prop from taking a shot. They just got to limit his options. And that's, that was what we saw there in, in the best possible light. And I think the Thomians have done well identifying uh, the, the, royal, uh, the Royalist weaknesses. Uh, Shanaka, especially in the third, uh, uh, third quarter, Royal have had their chances but failed to capitalize. Francis has an open goal. Is he going to shoot? Yes, he is. But oh. Kalidu Hetiarachi is up to the task but concedes the corner. Corner ball on uh, the far side, Silva calling for it and uh, Isuru Kahandavada will give it to Francis who took the shot. He's outside the five meters, he might look for another one and instead looks for Dilaka Viraratna whose uh, shot is blocked partially. It's a good block as we see the swimmers swimming to the other end of the goal. Not many open spaces for Royal. A lovely uh, dummy there. Will he take a shot? Oh, it's off the post. Valiant attempt gone yes, in vain. It's a lovely lob there from uh, Senit Sabaranayaka. Chandula Fernando did really well, but the pass was just a little bit behind Sabaranayaka. He had to go back to get it. Sauja with the ball on the wing. He's got Asian Francis breaking in here. And he wins the foul. Francis looks for oh the little scoop shot. No finds only the bar of the goal. So we see both teams trying uh, the lob lobbing technique, Shanak. Huh? As you said, more than the power, they're going for the placement. Well, that speaks volumes of uh, the quality of the goalies as well, Harun. You don't try lobs unless you uh, unless you can't beat the goalie any other way. And uh, psychologically, both goalies have imposed themselves. And uh, Kalindu Hetiaracha, despite conceding a few goals, has come up with some good saves as well. I think, uh, with the end of the third quarter, St. Thomas is uh, leading eight goals to four. 
uh, a four goal advantage for the Thomians. They have some space to breathe, I think, with one more quarter to go. It will be all defense, Shanak. I feel uh, uh, not all, uh, all not outright defense. Obviously, they'll have to look at scoring opportunities, but they will want to either maintain or extend the lead that they have currently. Well, eight fours and Thomases will be quite happy. They don't have to take any risks. A four goal lead is an absolute luxury going into the second uh, second leg. But I'm sure the coaches won't be happy. Knowing Zafa as I do, I'm sure he'll be saying, I want to take at least six goals into the second leg. Shanak, it's surprising to see, uh, has Jan Mubarak uh, been involved with the Royal College team this year? Uh, well, he has been uh, involved on the periphery, but I think his Sri Lanka cricket duties have uh, probably meant that he had to relinquish the coaching duties he uh, to Arlo Caprelis from uh, last year. He did a good job uh, with the Royal College uh, team. It was a young team when he took them over. But uh, Brelis is uh, somebody who's very experienced here at uh, coaching. He's been a fixture of the Royal Coaching uh, staff for a while now. Well, I think Shanaka, I think uh, when from the inception of this game, I think St. Thomas have done exceptionally well to win the first 14 tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, uh, I think it was 2002 when uh, Royal, or even after that. 2005. Yeah. Royal first won the Heyman in 2005. So, yeah. quite a long wait for Royal, I think, in terms of winning a Heyman. I, so, I feel St. Thomas would have had exceptional size uh, for those 14 years. Well we, well, we did. We had some very good swimmers. We had some uh, good goalkeepers as well. Guys like uh, Sashi Vedamanikam, who played for Sri Lanka as well. Ravi Piyaratna was an outstanding goalie. Senu Rabewadana, who is a referee now, who is an exceptional swimmer and goalkeeper as well. And for us, back in the late 90s, it was uh, not about beating Royal, it was about how much we beat them by so <laughs> that, that has changed St. Thomas's were, I guess back back in the day back in the day it was but that has clearly changed uh, for the better and it's a much more it was a competitive encounter back then as well I remember Roshan Ranasinghe's her side in 1995 was the first one that actually drew a leg of the Heyman in the final swim ball and is once again won by the Royalists yeah, hope yeah, they Jaffa. take this in a positive uh, in the most positive way so that they can score a few goals in this well, they've got nothing to lose, uh, Royal. They've got to attack and keep attacking. There they go, trying to find some width, refer to ways. The diagonal ball across. Aziz at the top. Ways once again. Oh, that's an impressive goal. Koshala Vijayavadana will kick himself when he sees a replay of that one. But Rifat properly faked him. So that's the ideal start the Royals would have been looking for. So they narrowed the lead down to three goals. 8-5 Zafar Zainuddin puts uh, Satita Jayatilaka back in his star prop. Tomian defense getting much more stronger. With the inclusion of Jatilaka. Shakya Gunatilaka goes out. And Jatilaka now being called for the offensive foul, elbowing off Aziz. You see Good a call a by the sprint by the Royal Prop. A bit of urgency, but maybe a little too late in the day. Harun. Viraratna does well to get to uh, that ball as a defender. He's got. Uh, Keshan Munasingha. Exactly, Shanak, a three goal lead, not uh, probably eight minutes, not sufficient to cover a three goal lead. Uh, looking at the Tomian outfit, with their experience, the defense has been exceptional today. Uh, it's going to be really tough for all if they have to uh, uh, gain a lead in this encounter. Well, more, more, more so than the exceptional defense, I think it has been a bit of poor passing from Royal as well. A combination of both uh, the Harun, but uh, as you say, I don't think Royal have the mental aptitude to come back into this game right now. Unless, of course, St. Thomas's do silly things like that. Dilaka Viraratna. With a major foul there. And if you see an exclusion. Yes. Excluding uh, Dilaka Viraratna. It'll be interesting to see how Royal capitalized uh, this phase of play, Shanaka. The first one man ahead. 
the first exclusion for St. Thomas's, which means that uh, Royals first extra man situation. Ways looks for the shot. This is good hustle from Marshall Francis, goal. but well taken there by the Royal number nine, Basit Yakub. He's got a great left-handed shot. Got long limbs. And uh, reminds me actually a little bit of the way uh, Mubarak used to be in the water. Very long limbs, difficult to get a hand on the ball. Exactly, Shanak would have been really difficult to get past him, I guess. Yes, he used to uh, periscope those arms out and intercept a lot of passes which we never imagined, but fought a lone battle for Royal in those days. Royal have brought down the lead to two goals. It's going to be interesting to see how the last minutes of play uh, is going to be. Yaya Jaffa has been uh, substituted for the last few moments of this game. And uh, Anthony Vijayawadana finds his way into the pool. And an exclusion once again with Sachita Jayatilaka bearing down on goal. Uh, Akil Sauja takes a good shot but will retain the 24 seconds. Sauja again with uh, two men crowding the bars of the goal. He's got to take a shot here. And it's a good one. Akil Sauja gets uh, St. Thomas's first goal in the second quarter. St. Thomas is capitalizing the one-man advantage uh, in that phase of play. Extending the lead once again to three goals. St. Royal. Thomas is uh, showing better instincts there, Harun. Because you could see that uh, Royal, even though they scored in that power play, they had to shuffle the ball around a lot. There was uh, not a lot going on, but St. Thomas is showing a little bit more power. Akil Sauja scores the goal and uh, gets a seat as a reward. And Sharkia Gunitilaka comes back in. He's a specialist prop marker by the looks of things. Sharkia did well to assist Ashen Francis for a goal as well earlier on in the piece. Uh, uh, there's substitution. The play has been held. It made a substitution of the goalkeeper as well. Kalindu Hete Arachi goes out and Prasad Disanayaka comes in. Kalindu is suffering from cramp. It's been a hot day today, Harun. Uh, I think a lot of people would have anticipated a bit of rain today. But exactly, Shanaga. I think the past three days have been really hot. We've had quite torrential rains uh, across the island. Uh, a lot of landslides, flooding taking place. But the past three, the last three days have been really, really hot. Uh, probably a blessing for a sport like this, uh, where especially the uh, viewers and the spectators would want to get drenched in the rain doesn't make a big difference to the players in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. But uh, from a visibility point of view for the referees as well, it's uh, important that there's no rain around. And Kalindu Hetiarachi comes back into the pool after having dealt with that cramp. It's indeed really great to be a part of another all Thomin event. Uh, been a lot involved with uh, the cricket encounter. Uh, but uh, as a part of being a part of uh, the Papare team as a part-time commentator it's indeed a pleasure to do so and especially the first time uh, com giving commentaries for water polo Shanaka so great to have it's you a new experience Shanaka. great to have you Harun it's been an absolute pleasure calling the game with you hopefully we'll see you for the second leg as well and uh, these Royal Tobian encounters do turn out to be uh, memorable and I'm sure next week Prelis would have worked tactically and strategically on what he needs to do now that he's seen St. Thomas's that's the width that uh, Royal are trying to get back into their game. Always with the diagonal ball. And, and that was uh, Anthony Vijayawadana shooting into the light. It's a little, dif little difficult. That ball coming straight out of the uh, floodlights here at the Sukhidadasa Stadium pool. Yahya Jaffa back in the pool. Senior man from uh, Royal. Currently the score at uh, good save, 9-6. We refer to ways. Royal will have to up the ante if they have to score uh, the three goals to come the way. That they lose the ball yet again. Aimless passing there, exceptional, uh, very, very poor. And once again creates open spaces for the Tomians. But that point you made a little earlier about the reflection of the pool, uh, Arun, that's where Jaffa lost the ball, I think. 
Satinda Jayatilaka loses his cap. He really needs to tie it a little tighter. He lost it so many times last year as well. Once again, the ball lost by the Tomians. And the problem for Jayatilaka, Harun, uh, discussing this with uh, Pamukia a little earlier on as well. He's involved in so many sports, but uh, doesn't really have enough time to work on his conditioning. His fitness, if it was a little bit better, I think he would rival the likes of uh, Bilal Hassan because he's got so much talent. But one thing people don't really know about Bilal is how hard he trains. And, uh, you know, it's not just natural talent only. He's got plenty of that, but uh, he trains very hard to be as fit as he is to be able to do the things he does. And uh, Satchit Jayatilaka, I think, he's a guy with that amount of talent. If he trains a little harder, I think he could uh, probably be in that same league. Exactly, Shanaka. So much potential in him. I think he has the physique to do so. It's just that he got, he, he, as you said, he's got to condition himself. As you see, St. Thomas is on the attack once again. Exclusion from uh, Royal. That's Anthony Vijayawardana who goes out. So it's two exclusions. So the ball had to be taken from uh, where the exclusion occurred. I think uh, Keshan Munasinghe took it from in front of where the foul occurred and uh, Zafar Zainuddin has called the timeout. The coaching staff looking rather relaxed. That's good to see. They were very tense when the anthems were going on. It will be interesting to see how Royal defend uh, this phase of play. There, we are, there are two excluded uh, within the sidelines of the pool. So St. Thomas have a two-man advantage. Ideally, they should score Shanaka. They, they should. They like to take the four goals in psychologically. Much better to take four goals into the second leg than three. Should work the goalie up and down a little bit laterally. Because uh, he has suffered from a cramp, so they will know that. Just work the ball side to side. That was an uh, ill-judged pass into a crowded two-meter area. Corner ball. And Munasinghe moves uh, towards the sideline to take it. Bielaka. Munasinghe, oh. not a good pass from... Uh, the former skipper, but he's excused for his uh, brilliant performance today. Oh, that's oh, a wonderful dude. goal. Akil Sauja, second time of asking, gets the backhanded flick into the bottom corner of the goal. No chance for Kalidu Hetti Arachi. Outstanding piece of uh, passing from uh, the wing. That was a lovely phase of play there by the Thomians. I think they, they made maximum use. Uh, of the assets uh, that they have brought into this game, uh, Shanaga. Superb performance from uh, St. Thomas's in the first quarter, really uh, blowing open this uh, encounter for them. Royal have been playing catch up since then. Once again, aimless uh, shot at the goal. Royal. More than, uh, more than strategy out of desperation, trying their level best to uh, come close and uh, slender the lead as they have another opportunity to score. Jaffa has the ball ripped off him. That's a good pass to Asal Arachi finally, but he has no confidence in front of goal. Jaffa looks for Yakub, Yakub, and well saved there by of Tamidu Ranasinghe. And now St. Thomas's counter-attack, Ashen Francis. Munasinga in the middle of the goal with the goalie at his mercy. And that's the icing on the cake for St. Thomas's. A five-goal lead to go into the second leg. And Royal could have cut it to three goals or two goals. But a complete lack of confidence in front of goal from Arsenal Arachi. And unfortunately for Royal, they botched a clear scoring opportunity and conceded at the other end to make it uh, a double blow. Absolutely, Shanaga. Another missed opportunity. Cost Royal really badly. Five goal uh, advantage for St. Thomas's. I think barring the second quarter, St. Thomas's have been really clinical in their performance, Shanaga. They've been exceptional. 
And you see the Somian coach calling a timeout. The sorry, the Royal crew have called a timeout. Desperate to try and claw one back before this final minute is up. But uh, now a five goal lead uh, for St. Thomas's. It's uh, 11 to six. Sharaka, how much do you think? Seven actually. How much do you think the exposure and the experience of uh, last year's encounter has had an impact on the Snowmian side? Uh, well, obviously the experience does count, and uh, when you when you have momentum, uh, Arun, it's uh, it's a big deal. I think for you could see this in the Royal Tommy and Rugby encounter as well. When uh, Royal had uh, won for so many years, you just come in with that confidence that you're going to win. And St. Thomas's with uh, two wins under their belt would have had uh, the confidence going into this game as well. And you can see that in Asala Rachi, who scored some goals last year and uh, just very frightened to take a shot, very frightened to make a mistake. Good shot. Good shot at goal there by... Sandula Fernando it was, the captain, bringing one back. Zafar Zainuddin uh, losing his cool a little bit with the uh, referee. As you said, Chanaka, he seems to be a bit emotional in decision. Yes, he is. Uh, this is what he's got to make sure he curbs Francis with the Hail Mary to end the game. Just uh, beating the bar there. And that's the end of the game. And that's that. It's half time here at the Dr. Ariel Heyman Trophy Encounter because it's the end of the first leg. It's been a thrilling uh, match despite the fact that St. Thomas's have won it uh, rather convincingly. 11 goals to 7. And uh, the arguments go on even after the uh, game ended. But I think. St. Thomas has need to take the four goal lead and just uh, forget about that one goal and realize that their players have what it takes to win this one if they uh, don't let these external issues get to them. Alok Aprelis meanwhile and his royal team have a few things to think about when they go back to Reed Avenue but uh, make no mistake four goals is not by any stretch of the imagination a guarantee that the Heyman is coming back to some Mount Lavinia. I'm sure with this uh, support and uh, energy that has built up behind this Royal College team, they will form, uh, form themselves back into a formidable outfit when they come back to the same venue next Saturday. We'll bring you the action from the uh, second leg encounter as well of the 24th Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy here from the Sukhada Dasa Stadium pool. From Harun and myself, until next week, it's goodbye for now.